people down here. We've uh, we've gotten uh, a couple of close to 90 days down here in Indy, but it, it's been beautiful out here. Nice. Glad to hear it. Yeah, the, the garden is uh, all of a sudden filled with weeds. <laughs> <laughs> nice big spike in temp. Uh, necessitate some some weeding this weekend but uh that just means everything's growing so we're happy about it yes we'll uh give everybody the obligatory you know couple minutes to roll in um, then we'll get started my goal is always to make sure that uh all of your questions are answered. I'll repeat that a couple of times throughout, but I uh, want to make sure this is worth your time that you guys are investing to be here this morning. All right, well, uh, while we wait for everybody uh, trickle in, uh, why don't we do some intros and, and share um, your name, the organization you represent, and what you hope to take away from this morning's presentation. Deb, would you do us the honors to get started? Me? Yes, <laughs> okay. So I'm Deborah Silver. I'm the executive director of Sequenza Chamber Music Incorporated, which is a 501c3 whose mission is to support and govern the activities of duo Sequenza, of which I am half, the flutist half at the Flute and Classical Guitar Ensemble based out of Northwest Indiana. Uh, we tour nationally. We used to tour internationally, but we're too old for that. And uh, we're also recording artists uh, releasing on Navona Records. And um, yeah, so that's who I am, and just uh, here to learn more about the mysterious SEO, which I've come to understand is like crucial to <laughs> to everything that we do these days. So uh, that's it. Definitely, this is uh, great timing for for Deb. We're going to be rolling out a new project with her, and and she'll be able to understand the components of our executables. So, Ryan, uh, would you mind going next? <clears throat> Sure. Well, good morning. Uh, I'm Ryan Henry, Idea Guy for Open in Indiana. We help entrepreneurs connect and learn the skills necessary to build a successful local business. And today I'm here to learn more about the small business community's most hated acronym. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm hoping to take away some uh, good info that uh, I, I can start using on my website right away. I don't know, Ryan, IRS, CPA. I mean, these are all things that uh, small business owners dread. So maybe not the worst. <laughs> it's it's definitely up there. Absolutely. Nancy, would you uh, mind sharing a little about yourself and what you hope to take away today? I'm not sure if you can hear me. We can, yeah. Now you're unmuted. Okay, Nancy's muted again. So if Wade, are you available to share?
Okay. How about Don? Good morning. Morning, Don. How are you? Here. Um, Joe and I go uh, kind of a ways back. We do. Uh, we we did a. Uh, 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 .NET Nuke uh, community or area uh, users group a long time ago. Um, so that's how I know Joe. Uh, I'm Don Gingold from Sprocket Websites. Uh, we build websites. We help people with social media. Uh, it's always good to hear what, uh, you know, share information and hear what uh, our, our colleagues are saying about SEO. SEO is, as everyone has said here, uh, regardless if they uh, uh, love it or hate it, it's a necessary thing to know. Certainly. Well, thanks for joining us today, Don. You can uh, fact check me and uh, we can probably talk philosophy here a little bit too. Exactly. Janine? Janine, are you available to introduce yourself or? Okay, then we'll uh, go to the phone. Someone uh, calling in today? All right. So active listening is good. Feel free to enter chat questions or unmute yourself at any point. The benefits of uh, having a small group is that uh, we can have as much conversation as, as our schedule allows. We'll try and wrap up the presentation in 50 to 60 minutes, and then I'll be available uh, as long as anyone wants to stick around to have specifics and uh, hypotheses and uh, theories tested <laughs> following with the Q&A section. So uh, thank you all for joining us. We're here today with... Um, for SEO, or as we like to call it, online community building, um, there's obviously a lot of technical components to SEO, and uh, we definitely take care of those, but we're going to focus today on things that uh, don't require a lot of uh, time on the back end uh, or technology. We'll, we'll cover some of the basics and getting pages outlined correctly, and then um, we'll talk a lot about the uh, traditional PR and online lead generation activity that's really the vital component of SEO for small business owners. Uh, we can't be investing in things that just provide a high ranking and don't translate into revenue. Um, so we'll cover our theory and philosophy around that. We'll cover a little bit of a 30,000 foot view, and then uh, we'll go into some specifics and actually leave you guys with a checklist of uh, things you can do to impact your SEO. And more importantly, a strategy document that can govern that effort. Um, so without further ado, um, for those of you who don't know me, <clears throat> my name is Joe Skibby. I've been the uh, principal of <clears throat> JRS Marketing Communication, <clears throat> Allergy Suffer, pardon me. And uh, we've been helping businesses be seen and be heard for now more than 20 years as, as the gray hair on the side here will dictate. <clears throat> we aren't the um, SEO agency or digital marketing agency of record for any particular industry. We do enjoy uh, learning how different businesses um, achieve sales levels, close uh, e-commerce sales, um, sell widgets, et cetera. So we have served hospitality, healthcare, manufacturing, uh, not-for-profit, publishing, retail, and the service industry, professional services. Um, we're a member of five different chambers throughout Northwest Indiana and the Northwest suburbs of Chicago. Um, and we have clients uh, across the nation. So we're gonna start, and a lot of you may have heard, a lot of you may have definitions of your own. Um, you know, what is SEO? Why are we all here this afternoon? Um, and how can we as small business owners impact um, uh, the ranking on the different search engine results page. So these three circles are uh, Google, Yahoo, and Bing. Um, depending upon which list you look at, these are the top three by user um, domestically. You get into Baidu and DuckDuckGo as you start to look at an international audience. Um, basically, 
these are things consumers use to potentially find information, whether that's information about something they're researching or information about your business offering. Uh, the search engines are where people go. <clears throat> and we'll talk a lot about uh, search engine optimization um, as it relates to the search engine results pages, which would be if we were to type in a query in any of these search engines, the search engine results page or SERP is what um, presents your information and that's the ladder you're trying to climb. Um, but, you know, our first pivot is strategically, what terms do you want to rank for? You can't rank for all of the terms relevant to your industry. Uh, we'll talk about how you can go about researching and selecting those terms. But back to, you know, the definition, this is from a company called Search Engine Land, which is, um, the link here is in the presentation and I'll share a link to these slides so you can all access the process of improving your site to increase its visibility for relevant searches. So someone is searching for your product or service, there's opportunities on that search engine results page. How do you maximize those opportunities and make sure that you're there? Better visibility your pages have in search results, the more likely are you are to garner attention and attract prospective and existing customers to your business. So we'll cover some statistics on the industry and search engine results pages and uh, search traffic. Um, but that that's the goal is we want to be present when a consumer prospect uh, is searching for our product or service. Um, and again, if that's national, uh, regionally, in our city or a nearby search, we want to make sure that we're there. That's the effort of SEO. So a lot of statistics today to kind of justify the effort of being here. Um, Ryan mentioned in, in the intros, it's the you know, worst acronym. People just dread SEO. Um, but again, we're going to try and simplify that and we're going to make it so that uh, you understand some things that you can be doing to impact your SEO. So there's trillions of daily, uh, actually trillions of monthly searches. Uh, Google has approximately 92% of the search market. There is as much a monopoly as you could imagine. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about Google. We're going to you know, touch on some of the other search engines, but uh, you know, we're going to play the, the we're going to prepare our information so that Google can understand it. Again, why is SEO important? There's 50 billion connected devices projected, um, voice search, smartphone, tablet, PC. We're just getting into the internet of things where your refrigerator is going to be able to talk uh, to your online profile to reorder your groceries. Uh, your washing machine is going to let you know when there's a repair necessary or um, you need additional detergent. All of these connected devices um, are going to be impacted by search engine optimization. <clears throat> um, so 53% of web traffic comes from organic search. So out of those trillions of searches, um, more than half are going to websites. Um, the top four results on any page, search engine results page, get over 95% of the traffic. Um, you know, maybe Don is familiar with this quote, but it's the best place to hide a body is the second page of Google. Some of you also may have come across that. Uh, it's just a reference to how nobody goes deep into the search engine results pages. They're looking primarily at um, the first results, and that's why it's important to be there. <laughs> um this is a telling statistic. And again, another reason why we're here talking about SEO, 90% of all web pages get no organic search traffic from Google. So this is, we're going to talk a pivot point on, you know, is SEO right for your business? Um, or are there other tactics that you can be using in order to drive traffic, build repeat customers and, um, drive that retention business that we're looking for. Almost 80% of people who search nearby on their phones visit within a day. 90% um, of consumers have used the internet to find a local business in the last year. None of these should be surprising to us. 91% um, of consumers say that positive reviews make them more likely to use a business. Um, and really, most importantly, your customers are online. 
um, whether you've connected to them, whether you've engaged with them on social, whether you've gotten them to your website is another, another question. And we'll talk again about that, that fork in the road on whether or not we continue with SEO or we look at other online lead generation tactics, paid marketing, um, acquisition or, or retention strategies. So again, we're not just here to say you have to SEO. Um, we're here to kind of dictate whether or not it's really worth pursuing. Um, you know, as a small business owner, we have not only huge expectations on our time, but uh, oftentimes limited resources, maybe uh, investing to be the top ranked search for a particular term. Maybe we achieve that top ranking, but there's not a corresponding increase in revenue. Uh, an example of this, uh, when we first started um, pitching our digital services back in 2015, we pivoted exclusively to digital. We figured having digital marketing strategy in Arlington Heights would be a beneficial term. That's where our headquarters was. Um, and proof and concept, we were able to gain that ranking very quickly. Um, I can honestly say there, there hasn't been one phone call or one email come in from having that first ranking. So a lot of people tell you SEO is vital. You know, this is where we kind of differ in terms of online community building. There's other opportunities to get, stay in front of, and have your clients turn into advocates for you outside of SEO. And that's kind of where our, our strategies are not only going to be climbing ranking for multiple keyword phrases, but building engagement through um, social channels, traditional PR channels, um, e-notice distribution, et cetera, which structured correctly are all components of SEO. So reasons for SEO. Maybe you're not getting the web traffic you think you need. Um, maybe you just want to see it increase. Um, you've started to see a pulse from your web activity. and Phone calls are coming in. Um, Let's see, we're getting some background noise. Um, oops. So <clears throat> you want more people to visit the site. The same kind of sales philosophy. If I meet 100 people, get 10 appointments, I get one customer. You can use metrics similar for your website. If you don't know how many phone calls or conversion actions are coming through to your website, um, you, you want to at least determine a baseline and you can do that by increasing web traffic. Um, you want to grow your social media audience. Um, maybe you're doing paid advertising, maybe you're investing in SEO, maybe you're managing social media. All of those are things that uh, benefit search engine optimization. Back to the web traffic increase, you'll see an increase in online lead generation. You want to stay in front of new prospects. Um, communicate new offerings, a product launch, a book release, an event that's coming up. And then if you haven't invested in SEO, but you're looking to sell your business in that three to five year window, um, you can get substantially more value uh, from exiting the business with a robust web presence, with an uh, online lead generation tool um, than you can if you know, your website hasn't been updated in, in 10, 12 years and you're not really using it as a tool. There are reasons, you know, not to optimize for search. Um, maybe you're going out of business soon and an investment in the business uh, isn't warranted. Maybe you've got thousands of contacts in a database that you're able to successfully leverage through email marketing. Maybe you've got a large social audience that uh, is driving leads, referrals, and conversion actions through the social media itself. Um, or you're spending a lot on paid advertising to be able to drive the traffic that would ultimately come from search engine optimization. And again, I'm, I'm not claiming that search engine optimization is the be all end all, um, but maybe you're doing other things to be driving that traffic and investing. Um, what we really wanna look at is when we're looking at marketing budgets is across different media, whether it's social media, e-notice distribution, new website, traditional PR, search, which one is performing the best, and then slide more money towards that on a continual basis. <laughs> Maybe this is how we all feel and why Ryan doesn't prefer the acronym of SEO. Um, 
we're going to talk a little bit about the structural components of SEO. Then we'll revisit how do I SEO with, with our particular strategy. Um, but always when, when we're talking SEO, there's black hat, white hat, which black hat is uh, negative tactics that would potentially get you delisted. White hat is more of a generally accepted best practice. On page, off page, you're talking about on page, the content and architecture of the site and off page um, tactics that we do to reinforce the content, um, expand it to new audiences, develop trust, build links and uh, engage users. So um, there's over 200 ranking factors. I'm not going to sit here and say that this is a deep dive into all of them, but these are a pretty good um, top level architecture in terms of the next breakdown components of each of these that we'll cover. And of course, with Google owning uh, search share, again, over 92% of search is run through Google, we have to talk about um, their guidelines. And you know, this is a Google user content link. This is directly from Google. Um, EAT is the new acronym um, in SEO that everybody's advocating for. You know, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness all of the things we're going to cover in terms of uh, tactics are going to be reinforcing this as long as they're executed within a dedicated strategy. So, you know, expertise. Um, did you just decide you're going to sell widgets um, yesterday and now you're going to go online and try and build an audience? It's going to take some time to demonstrate the uh, subjective signals that Google can measure. Um, things like having a web presence that's been around a while, having articles published in trade journals, um, having those trade journals linked back to our website, um, directory listings, how many different uh, white pages, yellow pages, Yext listings do we have saying that our business has been around for a while, uh, citations, how many releases, how many um, listings online reference our business or our individual for, for promoting ourselves. <clears throat> That's how Google measures expertise. And these are the things that we can impact um, in our communications efforts to build that expertise online. Again, we talked about the length that the website has been around, um, who's backlinking to the content, what's the domain authority of the website that it's going to, all uh, websites have a domain authority score and um, you can look at a LinkedIn or Facebook as having an authority score of 99. Um, I think our business website is, is under 25. So even working on it, you know, we're not going to get the, the level of a national uh, or international web presence, but building um, authority comes from having respected backlinks from other sites as long as, uh, as, as well as being in business for a long time. Um, the trustworthiness portion, again, is um, you're sharing information that's, you know, you're not tagged as uh, fake news or things that need to be fact checked. Um, you're providing information that's true and accurate and um, that people are engaging with. <laughs> so back to on page, off page. Um, Anytime we're planning a website, we want to be taking into account the user experience, how they're navigating the site, um, entry and exit points, um, prominent calls to action, right? On every page, can I hit a button to call you? Is there a way I can contact you? Do you have chat or text functionalities on your website so that you can close the deal? That's really um, what we're focused on is getting people uh, to either provide you their name, address, and phone so that you can market to them in the future or reaching out to inquire further about your service or ultimately purchase. So the content that you're um, asking people to engage with, there's a, there's a length that makes sense based on the stage of their customer journey. And if you think of it as a sales funnel, um, maybe the first awareness piece, you want to keep short, you want to keep it brief. Um, you get into a deeper evaluation piece where somebody's interested and now they want to understand more about the product. Then you expand into a longer piece, maybe add a short video. Now they've consumed that 
You can serve additional pieces of content that are longer, maybe asking questions, uh, furthering their intent to purchase, and ultimately steering them to the purchase. Um, all of the content length is going to be determined by the stage in the customer journey and mapped out in your user experience. Um, links to any sources, uh, incorporating relevant keywords, uh, making sure that you're titling images. Um, a lot of sites uh, end up using, you know, the whatever the file name arch architecture is from your camera, uh, DSC 0697 or whatnot. You want to resave that as um something in line with how you're titling the page and something that summarizes the copy uh, and uses the keywords that you're working for. Uh, video uh, or audio on page. And then again, that prominently displayed call to action. All of these are for on page and the content piece. For the other subhead of on page is architecture. Um, and again, when we talk about architecture, we're talking uh, back end of the website. We're talking um, potentially the coding side of it. But if you're using a builder like Wix or Weebly um, or WordPress, you can do all of this without any coding. <clears throat> Oops. So, again, if uh, your website has a SSL, Secure Socket Layer Certificate, um, that's important so that people don't get warnings that your site's not safe. Um, those are fairly easy to implement. Uh, I believe it was 2018 that Google mandated the SSL certificate as a ranking factor. Um, we mentioned the alt tags on images. It's just a free opportunity to include your keyword uh, on the web page so that the crawler, uh, Google's web crawler that's constantly crawling for new content and constantly crawling web pages, you're able to use the keyword um, or keywords that you're looking to rank for in another space. Um, definitely want to fix any broken links. Um, driving people to pages that can't present is frustrating and limits your engagement metric, which they're measuring for time as well as page depth uh, when navigating your site. Um, Google speed score, this is an old statistic, but uh, we've heard every one second delay in load time, you lose 11% of your traffic. So whether that's remained constant or increased, um, envision your usage. <laughs> and if you get you know logged or delayed a second or two, do you stick around or do you uh, close out that site and continue your search elsewhere? H tags or, or header tags. Um, if you think of the content on your website like an outline, H tags are the subheads that would go and title uh, each paragraph of content or um, at any relevant information breaks. You want to make sure that you're tagging it appropriately. Um, again, so that Google's subjective crawler can understand this is the title, this is the subhead, this is the next subhead, this is the content, et cetera. Because it's not objective with the crawler, it's subjective. So you just have to present the information. And, and none of this, again, requires coding. Um, this can be done in the WordPress builder um, and uh, Wix, Weebly, et cetera. All of these are, are fairly easy. Um, meta descriptions and tags. Each page needs to be described uh, so that Google understands what the page content is about and the information that's presented. Um, writing a meta description uh, indicates what the page is actually about and tagging it with the appropriate keywords um, lets you know, lets Google know what the page is about. Mobile responsive, uh, a vital component since uh, 2015 when Google said that was a ranking factor or you would be penalized for not having a mobile responsive site. Um, you want to make sure that it presents evenly across uh, PC, tablet, smartphone, um, all the images resize, all the content represents, perhaps navigation changes slightly um, for the different device, but um, that is a ranking factor. And then friendly URLs, anytime you're adding a page, <clears throat> uh, it will assign a, a number, uh, potentially blog, backslash, 
date backslash title. Um, you want to make those a little more friendly. Uh, just keep it to the topic backslash blog article, right? Keep it to the topic that you're writing on. Um, make sure that uh, they're easily shareable and that they don't uh, contain too many unnecessary characters. So, so far, all of uh, what I'm advocating for can be done without coding experience in uh, most, if not all of the prominent web builders. Um, so hopefully we're kind of unearthing some of the things that are required, but also aren't making it uh, intimidating to get into. Um, and at any point, if there's questions, shoot a chat or un unmute yourself. So off page, uh, we talked about Google's EAT acronym. Um, I love this picture because this is what a lot of us are doing, uh, standing in a corner at a networking event, screaming what we do and not engaging with anyone. Um, when we post to social media, but don't like comment or share anyone else's copy, this is what we're doing. When we're posting to our blog, but not sharing with local media or uh, syndicating it online, this is what we're doing. We're just shouting in a corner. And, uh, you know, when we talk about online community building, you know, this is what we're trying to defend against. Um, I don't know how many in my own personal navigation I go through and I like a lot of small business owners posts, comment, don't receive a reply, don't get any likes back. Again, that's not why I'm doing it, but um, that just lets me know that that business isn't being actively managed. Um, they're just pushing out content, which is supposedly the paradigm shift from traditional broadcast media to social media was supposed to eliminate. Um, so don't be the, the guy or gal screaming in a corner, um, build trust, build relationships. Um, again, look for that authority, uh, external factors supporting your expertise, and then engage with uh, high domain authority sites that are relevant to your industry um, and make sure that you're being a social individual uh, you know, representing your business online, like comment, share. Um, and all of this can be done in 15 to 20 minutes a day. Ultimately, you'll develop your core of uh, either constituents or prospects or advocates. Um, and you can trim those social media audience as well so that that time is spent efficiently. But this is where, you know, the opportunity to start informing people about your product or service off your website with the goal of driving them back to your website. That's where we talk about backlinks. Um, again, a backlink is any link to your site from an external source. You can also do uh, internal linking and um, kind of the holy grail of it all is the reciprocal backlink where you backlink to a site and they backlink back to your site, especially if it's from a high domain authority page. All right, so everybody has underutilized linking opportunities. Um, number one, internal links. If you're writing a lot about a particular topic, you can be referencing other articles that you've written on the topic, either to explain uh, a, co a concept that's presented in the article that you're releasing, or as a way to explain further any of the topics that you're bringing up. Those internal links are also a valuable uh, SEO tactic. All of us uh, belong to organizations, uh, whether they be membership organizations or our social listing, uh, our social media profiles. All of those profile pages should say the exact same thing, list your address in the exact same way, uh, your phone number, et cetera. Those should be uniform throughout. That's called NAP consistency name, address, and phone consistency. And it's how Google indicates a plus one for all of these additional sites. If you're uh, explaining your business one way on a profile and then free forming it on another, um, they don't see that as a plus one. They see that as two separate businesses, or at least it presents confusion and doesn't add a plus one. Uh, we talked about the directory listings. Google My Business, again, with Google running, over 90% of search, you have to be on Google My Business. You have to have a local profile. You have to have a Maps profile. Um, and then you can also be posting on Google My Business. 
as well as soliciting uh, testimonials or referrals. Uh, but you want to do that for, you know, Google My Business being Yahoo, um, and then a lot of aggregate uh, directory and citation listing companies will pull information from that. So they're actually doing the, ma the manual work of entering that information for you uh, because they're trying to be a resource for consumers. Any partner organizations, you know, if you have a manufacturer's rep for a sales channel, um, if you work with uh, entities, uh, we've done these presentations uh, with libraries, uh, community education districts, small business development centers. Uh, you want to be posting and sharing the information with those organizations as well. Guest blogging is an um, opportunity for you to share your expertise in your industry with others who may benefit from it, either, again, competitive or uh, complementary organizations or people hosting events um, that you can share information on. We talk a lot about press releases. Um, maybe you're not getting picked up and running the paper, but everybody's uh, putting a lot of information online. So that same press release that doesn't get run uh, in a print version may end up online and give you a backlink from a news source and then uh, being able to syndicate that information across the web so that it gets national pickup is a great way to build backlinks. Um, and then if you're doing presentations like this or have um, PowerPoint presentations, you can share it on SlideShare and make it available to an audience there. Um, other content distribution sources include uh, Medium. Um, and then we like to host it on our blog and share it across social media. That generates links back to your site as well. Um, users are important. And again, um, subjective based on ISP. So Google can tell where your users are coming from. If uh, you've looked at a Google Analytics report, you can tell where traffic's coming from. There'll always be a small percentage that is uh, unaccounted for or untrackable in terms of you know, why is someone from India or Russia visiting my website. Um, you can't necessarily control people visiting your site, but when that starts to become an overwhelming um, portion of traffic and you're not getting any local users, that's a red flag. Uh, so definitely uh, focusing your efforts on your, your um, regional geography and then um, keeping them there again not only via time, but then depth of how deep they're going into your website. Those are trackable through analytics too. And those are things Google's watching. All they want to know is somebody clicked, they landed on a page, which from Google's perspective, we provided a solution, the customer clicked. And then if they stayed on that page a long time, Google's going to say, we did a good job providing that person's uh, answer to their query. If they leave, um, with, you know, it's called bounce rate. If they leave before 10 seconds without taking an additional action, um, then obviously they can say we didn't do a good job providing that information. So uh, as much as it sounds, you know, unscientific to be able to track that information, they use um, factors that they're tracking in analytics to determine that. And then again, they can tag the uh, internet service provider, the ISP, and understand how many times they visited and uh, you can tell based on what landing pages they're going to or what navigation pathways, why they're visiting. And again, all of this is free tools. Um, Google Analytics is a free tool. Um, Google My Business is free, um, as are the other uh, search engine profile pages. All right, we're back, back to how. So, We've kind of given an overview. Um, we've talked a lot about uh, the components, um, again, from an overview standpoint. And then we talked a little bit about the specifics within those components. Um, now let's talk about brass tacks, how we get down to business, how we start to form a strategy that can actually impact our ranking. Um, First, you have to ask yourself, you know, as a business owner, what do I want to rank for? Um, is it all of my products? Is it an event that we're coming up? Is it uh, 
a small portion of our products or do we just wanna be a general service provider? And then it's important to segment who, right? Who do we want? If we had an ideal customer and they were to walk in the door, what would they look like? And then determining how and where, because there's li literally limitless opportunities for engagement. Um, you could spend all day navigating the social channels, engaging in um, message boards, uh, participating in forums. And if that's not done strategically, at the end of the day, you're going to end up with a whole lot of conversations without a lot of meaning or direction. <clears throat> so, again, understanding what you want to rank for. As a professional service organization, a lot of times we start with the service, right? Is it tree trimming? Is it HVAC repair? Is it insurance? Is it mortgages? Um, those are wide headings and you can get more specific uh, tree trimming, right? We, we just want to get stump removal growth for the next three months. And, you know, we would have had to implement a strategy, you know, weeks or months back to, in order to impact that. But for HVAC, indoor air quality, everybody's going to be turning on their air conditioning. Maybe they didn't change their filter. You can get very specific. And oftentimes that's where your um, gains are made. Um, the professional term is, you know, short, short tail keyword or long tail keyword. So the short tail is um, air conditioning. The long tail is indoor air quality and filter removal. So you kind of take it from the very vague to the very specific. And there's a lot of opportunity, the more specific you get. Um, again, maybe you want to rank for things to do in your geography. You have upcoming events. Um, you want to be in that list. Um, the important part is you want to research relevant keywords so that you know their search volume, what the potential cost from a paid standpoint is, and what competition level there is around those terms. On this next slide, we're going to talk about a general example uh, using our business, you know, for marketing, right? So if we were to, this is a graph pulled from the um, Google AdWords keyword planner tool. And again, to have a Google My Business profile, you need a Gmail address. Um, with that, you get not only the Google Maps, uh, you get the Google My Business where you can post, but you also get access to Google Ads. And uh, this is a keyword planning tool report for the terms advertising, content marketing, marketing, paid advertising, search engine marketing, and search engine optimization, all terms that, you know, we would like to rank for. And this is just a uh, volume report. So we see, you know, broad tail, or sorry, long tail, you have marketing at 3,600, very short, very uh, broad, advertising 1,900. Content marketing, that's a little bit more specific. Search engine marketing, definitely more specific. You see there's less opportunity, but Competition is lower as well. <clears throat> and then, you know, if you get into specifics, search engine optimization, again, it's kind of a buzzword. A lot of people are going for it, paid advertising. And it tells you what the average monthly search is. Uh, I did Chicagoland DMA for this. So um, this would be the market if we were trying to impact marketing. Um, you know, you can see from our blog titles, there's a lot deeper uh, depth that we're going than just general marketing tactics, you know, content marketing, video marketing, um, social media marketing, search engine optimization. We're trying to get more specific because um, marketing may be uh, pens or embroidered shirts or postcards uh, or f print flyers, you know. So we eliminate a lot of that. We pre-qualify through content. Um, and that's where we're able to make, make the most impact. So this is a vitally important piece of the strategy. You know, now you've got your keywords potentially selected. Um, who are we trying to reach? Um, is it a college age kid 
with uh, some summertime free time that with a lot of disposable income? Is it uh, parents of five to 13 year olds um, that drive Mercedes and listen to classical music? Is it um, Trump supporters? Is it Biden supporters? Is it uh, Bears fans, Colts fans? All of this stuff can be targeted. So it seems like a lot of uh, kind of guesstimation perhaps, but if you can draw up your ideal customer, then we can find that person. We can target um, through content exactly what that person's looking for and uh, then find that person and deliver the right information to them. And you can find it through unpaid channels by uh, creating a media list around trade journals or publications that person might read. You can do it around paid advertising on social media, um, programmatic advertising based on their web behavior and self-identified demographics. Um, so understanding who you're looking to find is a, a vital component of that strategy development. <clears throat> So with any luck, we've got our keywords. We know who we're trying to target, um, you know, how and where will we engage them? Uh, this is where the online community building becomes in line with SEO for us. Is the, are the articles and videos that we're creating, is the podcast relevant to our ultimate customer? Does it incorporate the keywords? Does it fit onto pages that we've structured around our products and services? That's where you start to get the plus one. It's in line with our social profiles. It incorporates our meta descriptions and tags. We're sharing information to build authority, um, expertise, and trustworthiness. And now we're, we're doing that on a regular basis, which is going to increase those factors. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be social. Uh, it can be direct mail. It can be e-notice. Um, oftentimes, one of the justifications for search engine optimization is so you can decrease your paid ad spend. If you're spending a ton to get the phone to ring on Google ads, um, maybe slide a little bit of that over to an SEO budget and give it a couple months and then start to compare side by side, which is more effective at generating leads. Um, you can be live streaming, uh, you can create infographics, <clears throat> animated GIFs, all of these things uh, will help you create engagement um, and sharing them on your blog, on your social profiles, any directory listings that uh, allow you to customize or share images. Um, that's how you get in front of people. That's how you stay in front of people. Not only is your information there at all times, but more importantly, when somebody's looking for your product or service, somebody gives a, a nod, say, hey, check this guy out. You've given them a business card. Um, now they're on your site. Now they have an opportunity to engage deeper. And that's kind of a common misconception is not everybody gets to your site from the homepage. It does, navigation doesn't look like home about um, work samples, contact us, right? Somebody may find your information from a slide share on LinkedIn. They land on the page where that slide share is housed and then they go to the block and then they, they reach out either phone call or schedule or contact. Um, and those, again, are all things that you can track through Google Analytics. Um, hopefully, I'm presenting, you know, a uh, study for the architecture, a study for, you know, expanded PR, traditional PR and digital PR, and ways to engage people. Because that's, that's really SEO, is you have to drive people to your site based on a shared goal. You know, your goal to close a, a product or service, their goal to find a solution to a need, and then to be able to foster them with uh, continued education if you didn't satisfy their need on the first visit, but you wanna get them back and ultimately um, capturing their information so that you can continue to communicate them with them through your, your sales journey. So I mentioned strategy, um, it's, the biggest piece of uh, what we do and the value that we provide to our customers, um, the best way it was explained to me is, um, you know, maybe you're investing financially for retirement and you've got a guy and he keeps your level head. <laughs> you see a news article about a company 
you know, taking a dip and you want to go jump in over here because you think you can make a killing. And he said, no, no, let's stick to the strategy. There's no shortage of opportunities. The biggest missing component of all <laughs> failed marketing campaigns is consistency. Um, you have to stay the course. You have to be able to follow um, for a long period, uh, six, nine, 12 months. Uh, a lot of this stuff takes time to get that expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness doesn't happen overnight. So if you're going to position yourself as an expert in your field, coming out of the gate, you're not, you're going to be the guy talking in the corner. Unless you start engaging people, unless you start sharing knowledge, unless you start uh, getting information out there that's pre-qualifying visitors to your site and increasing engagement, it's just not going to happen. Um, so real quick, I want to run through this strategy guide because we offer it as a link on our site. It's open to everybody. Um, and again, this three-page fillable PDF for our clients ends up being seven, 10, 20 pages, depending upon the complexity of the arrangement. But um, keywords, you know, not only the words you think, but the words Google recommends and ultimately their search monthly search volume. Because you can, if there's 10 people searching a month, that's not going to be worth an investment to climb. It may be an easy ladder to climb, but um, it's not necessarily going to warrant the biggest return. Geography, are you operating nationwide, regional, local? Um, business description, again, short form and long form. Every time you start a social media profile, uh, Google My Business profile, any search engine profile that you create, any uh, online directory or membership organization, you want to be saying the same thing. So to have a, a your elevator pitch in a short form, you know, 250 or less, 250 characters or less, or a long form, 500 characters or less, then um, you just copy and paste. It really becomes easy to start these things. You know, products and services offered, this may not be your entire service library. This might be just the things you want to be working to climb or promote. Local competition, uh, firm believer that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery in an SEO. That's true as well. Um, maybe the guy that's doing the same thing down the street from you is ranking higher than you. You know, at a very base level, you have to do all of the things he's doing in order to get up uh, to his level. And then you talk about distinguishing yourself and, and climbing and passing him. But being able to understand and track your local competition uh, becomes hyper important because you can pull reports that indicate where he's uh, performing better than you in, in a current snapshot in time. Goals, again, not only, you know, the who, what, and why of why we're doing this, but more importantly, how it's measured. Um, you know, you want to see increases in traffic. Well, we're going to use last year's Google Analytics information, or if you don't have analytics installed, we're going to be starting from this point and hoping that that is increasing. Um, you want to see more phone calls than last quarter of this year, uh, then you, do you have that historic information and can we run it against our, our tracking efforts? Um, social growth, maybe you just wanna see your uh, social media audience increase. Um, obviously you can benchmark where it's at now and look at that month over month and continue to see increases. Um, social bookmarking sites is becoming more and more uh, important. You know, if you're, Serving uh, millennials or zennials, you know, you just got to be on Instagram and TikTok. Um, there's still a large audience of um, stay-at-home moms and senior professionals who are on Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn for B2B is uh, vitally important. And we're still seeing a lot of crossover um, on all of them. So, um, you know, understanding that time is a limiting factor. You can't be on all of them all the time. So understanding which ones you want to participate in why um, so that you can measure and analyze moving forward. Uh, and then that customer profile, client persona is what we call our social media map. Who are we engaging with? Who's your ideal customer? Editorial is, is you're hearing a lot about content marketing. Are we going to be sharing a uh, uh, articles? Are we going to be sharing a podcast that we started or participated on? Are we going to be creating videos for uh, visitors to our site to consume? Um, what and when? 
And then we'll do you know a site map outline, make sure navigation and user experience are all in part. Um, even an offshoot of this site map might be all the pages that you're looking to incorporate. You'll want the meta descriptions and tags incorporated in that as well. Um, again, we're just kind of base baseline covering these things. All right, so that's the strategy map. Again, that's a document that uh, you'll have a link to. I highly encourage you to check it out. Fill it out on your own. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, but that is where I would start. And then um, we've gamified uh, next steps. You know, So now I've got this document filled out. Maybe now I've got my website in order. We've got some tracking pixels in place and some analytics. We've made this bingo card for everybody to participate. All of these things will help with your SEO. It will help you engage with your clients. It will help expand your online presence. Um, if you connect five in a row, X them out, uh, submit a photo to at JRS Marcom on Facebook. We'll um, send you a free JRS Marcom prize pack. Again, we really want um, you guys to leave with your questions answered and actionable items for you to take as next steps. So I'm gonna open it up to questions. Uh, please unmute yourself and um, let's make sure that uh, you leave with uh, answers to your questions, guys. I appreciate your time this morning. Joe, I have a question for you. Um, what would you recommend as far as WordPress plugins for SEO enhancement? Do you have a go-to? Yeah, so um, we use Yoast for a lot of our uh, baseline page titling, and you know they have a real nice interface where it gives you a green light to let you know uh, that your page is titled appropriately and your meta description is in line, and they give you the character counts. So that really eliminates any of the coding requirement. Um, and again, that's for the on-page stuff. Once the pages are titled appropriately, um, we're finding a lot of success on just getting into that, uh, that content distribution model. Um, so the pages are titled appropriately, they're searchable by the appropriate keyword with the right volume. And then we go out and advocate on behalf of that page via content and um, find that's, if not greater than definitely equivalent to the appropriate page titling. But yeah, the page titling, uh, SEO basics with the Yoast plugin is uh, something that we use. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Well, I'll be here for the next 10 or 15 minutes uh, as long as I keep getting questions. So feel free to uh, shoot them. We will be updating the page and sharing the slide share link to these so that you can revisit them. Um, you know, my contact information is there. Don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, follow us on your social media of choice at JRS Marcom. We're always sharing tips and tricks and uh, updates for any presentations. Typically, um, our SEO topics are our most popular, uh, followed closely by our social media topics. Um, we didn't kind of cover it directly, but um, most of the, all of our social activity ends up being beneficial to SEO. Um, so we include that in our SEO packages and uh, it's a great way to continue to drive traffic and add backlinks. <clears throat> Thanks for coming, Don. <laughs> yeah, quick question for you, Joe. Yeah. Uh, for businesses, uh, primarily, pushing content on social media and using that as their basis for outbound marketing, but yet running uh, client application and intake through their website primarily, what's the best way to, to maximize, I guess, you know, almost like you mentioned the backlink to get them funneled that direction. Yeah. So um, we'll util utilize an example for the HVAC industry. 
right? And, and pre-qualifying for uh, financing for an air conditioner unit. So you look at, at that customer and what they're needing, right? So first they're hot, maybe their air conditioner is going to break down and you share an article about discomfort. That's kind of that awareness piece. And that's a short article that's uh, going to capture their attention. You're going to get them on the site. Maybe um, you get them on the site and now you're going to have a pop-up uh, that says, you know, pre-fill your or pre, um, pre-approval for lending for a new unit. Um, maybe that's too soon in the customer journey. So on, underneath that article or underneath that pop-up, there's an article about uh, different units and their costs and, and the trade-offs, right? So maybe I want to look at the high-end one, but I can only afford the cheap-end one. So now I'm helping them evaluate that decision. Then uh, at the close of that page, maybe you have a for, for questions or to reach a tech, give us your information. And now you've got their uh, name, address, and phone. They've intent, given you their intent that they're looking to purchase that. And you can follow that up either with a direct um, sales call, uh, internal sales staff to follow up with them, or you can uh, send them additional pieces on purchase, either uh, units that they've engaged with or um, just a general pre-fill form that you can get that information ready. Um, so I don't know, it, you know, kind of to give you an idea how the content would guide you through that journey and all of that uh, potentially shared and targeted with paid advertising to your client persona for that product. And then uh, tracked and retargeted, they end up uh, on your page. Now they're going to get tagged by the, you know, whatever got them there, the, the Google ad pixel or the Facebook pixel, and you can continue to advertise to them to get them to that next step, um, serve them a different piece of content based on their prior engagement and ultimately get them to take the desired conversion action. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Yeah, hopefully I answered your question. <clears throat> All right. Oh, let's get back here. So I'm seeing uh, Shannon is the last remaining other than Wade. Do you have a, a question for us, Shannon? There's no guarantee she's there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop recording so I can catch up with Wade if he's got five minutes. Let's see.